This program is an Orange Bag Media production. Uh, I can't explain it in, in English, so you must cut it. <laughs> Everybody and welcome to Portugal at the seaside resort of Portimao. The Sinaitis people first inhabited this area in the prehistoric epoch. In 550 BC it was known as Portus Hannibalus. Sadly not much of that history remains. The great earthquake of 1755 and the tsunami that followed destroyed most of the buildings here in Portimao as it did pretty much everywhere on the Algarve coast. Shipbuilding and fishing was the economy of this area, although in more recent times it's become a tourist hotspot. We're not here for tourism, we're here for a battle in the Hancock 24 hours of Portimao. We're here at the Autodromo Portimao and um, we're here for the Hancock 24 hours of Portimao. Uh, once more we have a good uh, grid size of uh, GT and uh, touring cars in uh, many classes here present as uh, we will also have for our upcoming races in Barcelona, spa Francorchamps, and uh, last but not least our uh, event in the USA at the Circuit of the Americas in November. There's great interest in some new cars at this event. Monti Racing have brought the new Porsche GT3. It's not even on sale yet. No, uh, actually this is the brand new Porsche 911 GT3R coming out in 2019 to customers. So this will be the, the first race uh, of the car. You might think that a company like Porsche would just hire a track to test at their leisure. Uh, that's what we, we are used to do, uh, but nothing replaced the race conditions with traffic, with debris, with speed stops and, and whatever. We have seen already some cars uh, working without problems in, in testing, in private testing, but then coming to the race you get issues. So yeah, there is nothing better than race conditions and that's why we are here. The Audi R8 LMS has been updated for 2019 and they've chosen this race in Portugal to make sure the car has race pace. It's, it's hot, uh, the track is, is not so easy, it's difficult, you have up and down and uh, um, it's, uh, yeah, it's the best opportunity to test some new parts, uh, also for a lifetime uh, of the parts uh, you get some, some much mileage and yeah, it's, a, it's a great series. Given that this is such an important test for the car, technical issues won't stop the car from racing. I oh, know um, we wanna we wanna finish the race uh, uh, the best way with all three cars, but uh, if something will broke on the car, we will repair it anyway because we need the mileage on the new parts. Yeah. But not all three entries from Car Collection Motorsport will be finishing the race. Uh, one car unfortunately uh, needed to retire before the race, it's the uh, number 33 car collection Audi. They uh, had a broken uh, chassis. Well, how did it happen? Before I turned 13, I go uh, full throttle in the left corner and, the, and I have in the end of the left corner snap on over steering and then goes up to the grass and to the yellow banana curbs. Those yellow curbs damaged the chassis of the car, which couldn't be fixed at the track. That means we'll have to wait till the 24 hours of Barcelona to see the 33 Audi on track again. The race is on Saturday, qualifying on Friday, and it went well for the number 47 of Fox Motorsport. Surprisingly, it was quite quite okay. I just got a little, lost a little bit of time to one of the GT3s on my best lap. Uh, maybe could have gone a few tenths quicker, and a, a small mistake on my first run. Uh, with track limits cost me a bit of time, but other than that, it was it was fairly plain sailing, and you know all the drivers in the 24-hour series are very courteous to them, so not too bad at all. Always best to set your qualifying lap with the least amount of competitors ahead of you. Yes, sir. We we are looking all the time for a clean lap, 
But anyway, you can uh, hit some traffic all the time. And this happened to me in the, on the first set. That's the reason why, that's the reason why you put the second uh, set tires on. And yeah, how we said, P1 in class, this was our goal. We did it and I think it's a good, uh, how I said, point for the race. And those that raced last year can compare any changes that have been made to the car. We have the aero kit, the new aero kit, and we did uh, two tenths uh, faster than the pole last year. And uh, this is more or less our target, uh, but Mercedes is uh, faster. Pole position for SPS Automotive Performance and the number 24 Mercedes. Yeah, it's my uh, second race for the 24 hours, and uh, I'm so happy for the result for the qualification. And uh, it's very big race, and uh, yeah, I'm so happy. Formation laps are underway. What can we expect? It's, uh, it's really a test test race, so we, we want to have as much as, uh, as mileage as we can. And um, yeah, if it's, uh, we don't know how the new parts are working, but it, it looks like they are, they are working the whole race. But uh, yeah, it's a, it's a test. It's not for, for a position or for, for, um, for, yeah, for something like that or for, to win the race. We want to have mileage as much, as much as we can. We want to drive the whole race, not to have much repair, much repair brakes, but uh, yeah. And there are more that don't yet have a podium position in mind. Yeah, uh, the race is quite long and uh, we want to survive. We are four drivers. Uh, the other two drivers are quite in the same uh, time. And I think we can do a quite nice result when we come to the finish. And uh, yeah, the night is long to survive the night, uh, like all the time in the 24 hours race. And then we will see what we can do. Yeah, just drive, only drive with my co-driver and uh, yeah, I, I hope so for the finish line. We're looking forward to a good race uh, once more here in Portimao. The Mercedes of SPS Automotive Performance leads the field out of the final corner, two formation laps completed and the 24 hours of Portimao is about to get underway. Red light's still on, but the number 11 Bohemia Energy Ferrari already thinking about how to take that first position as soon as we get into racing. The lights are off, and from fifth position, here comes the yellow number 27 GP Extreme Renault trying to make up positions before the first corner. No, it was just cl uh, close racing, but very clean racing of everybody. Uh, obviously, everybody knows that it's the start of a 24 hour race, and we all try to make up a position if possible, but without taking big risk, without touching each other, because it makes no sense in a long distance race. Hoffer, number one Mercedes, and the Ferrari of Bohemia Energy, second and third overall, just about a car's length between them. Right behind them, the 27 Renault of GP Extreme and the number 15 Mercedes from Swiss Racing. But still up front, the number 24 Mercedes from SPS. Yeah, I'm so happy because I start the, at the first position and uh, for my first run, it's uh, so nice. I just uh, shit my, uh, my uh, relance for the Code 60, but uh, I'm so happy for my stint. The GT cars will have a few clear laps to fight between themselves. It's a packed field and it's going to get very busy as they catch the back of the pack. Three or four laps, we, we had a clear track, then we started to overtake the, the GT cars and the, the, the TC cars, so very busy, a lot of overtaking. This is also a track where you lose a lot of time, in, you can lose a lot of time in traffic if you get a car in, the, in a difficult position, but okay, we are still fighting. Of course, there's technology nowadays to alleviate the high temperatures in the car, but some of the teams have decided not to use that equipment as it saps power from the engine. Of course, that doesn't make the driving any easier. Yeah, it was what, quite hard because to follow Mercedes, I must uh, drive the car without air condition uh, because there are mid three tenths per lap and was uh, for us was essential to, to have this extra power. Uh, so it was really, really hard. Antonin Borger in the number 24 Mercedes AMG is in a stint long battle with the identical car of Christian Frankenhout in the Hoffer Racing number one. Yeah, yeah, but it's so nice battle because it's a very clean battle all the time. But uh, this race, it's so nice. Frank Ayer, it's uh, so fast, but uh, it's the same with uh, very clean and uh, so nice guys. Yiri Pisilic is now in the driver's seat of the number 11 Ferrari, but is struggling just a little. Uh, the track is very slippery now. 
because uh, the tarmac has over 50 degrees, so the stint was quite difficult. I didn't push too much over the limits because uh, we have 20 hours before us more, so just safely. Driving with a helmet on, tight seat belts, all limits your viewing angle, and that can cause incidents. I no, no, I, I crossed the guys and I had the brake. He touched me, but uh, the car is so clean, but it's okay. Christoph Lenz has just got into the number 15 car and has the same problems as his teammates that were in before him. Uh, Mauro did the start, he was um, not bad, but he struggled with the car, oversteer like crazy. Then Roberto took the car, the same, me, the same, the setup is uh, not very good, so we are not able to fight for the, for the win, for the podium, we are not able to do that. Kenneth Heyer in the Mercedes has been battling Yuri Pichirik in the Ferrari for second place overall. Was was uh, very close to him for I think 20, 25 minutes, and then uh, yeah, sometimes the advantage of the guys doing a lot of notch life is in the traffic, so uh, I get a good situation in the traffic, so I can overtook him and be in on second. But I was not very fast uh, instead of him, so you can close the gap again, and so then was only the opposite way. Uh, I was pushing in the front, and he was in the back, so uh, yeah, it was was enjoyable, it was fun, and uh, I think that that's one of the the reasons why we have so much fun here. Number 111 is recovering after it was hit on the track. Yeah, I got hit by the leading car, so uh, tried to overtake me at turn two, which is a little silly because it's not an overtaking position at turn two, it's uh, only one line through there. So uh, just hit me right in the rear, spun me round. Luckily it was only bodywork damage, uh, but lost us a lot of time and put us right to the back in, uh, in 991 class. The new Porsche 911 GT3R number 912 also needs a short stop in the pits, and that gives the advantage to their opposition in the SPX class. Well, we had luck because the Manta racing car they had problems, so they had to go in the pit and they got a penalty. So we could go from P2 to P1 and have about one lap advantage. Track was, as we would expect at that time of day, very hot, very greasy. It was really about trying to just manage the rear tire wear on the Mercedes. And uh, we had a good stint, drove along to a fuel number. We're just trying to get good fuel consumption and keep the tires on the car. Still very early, uh, early in the race. The first three hours of the race have been completed. Let's take a look at the standings. It's a great start for the Bohemia Energy Racing Scuderia Praha Ferrari. They lead and have a lap on the field. The three-man team is leading the five drivers of Hoffa Racing Mercedes in second, and they're only eight seconds ahead of Car Collection number 34 in third. Car Collection also the first A6 Am car, about 10 seconds ahead of the number 27 GP Extreme Renault RS01. Third in class, the number 24 SPS Automotive Performance car. In the 991 class, Porsche Racing number 189 leads and has a two-lap advantage over the number 24 of EB Motors. The number 111 Porsche of Track Club is another lap back in third. This is Endurance. Uh, endurance is everything has to come together, so you have to be fast because, you know, it's endurance racing, but nowadays the cars are so reliable that it's like a 24-hour sprint race, actually, because you are pushing all the time. Uh, all the pit stops need to go well, uh, the, all the drivers, because you are four or five drivers, so we, we all have to do a good job, so it's, it's really proper teamwork. This is the Autodromo Internacional do Algarve, also known as the circuit of Portimao, one of the most impressive circuits in Portugal. Uh, the racetrack in Portimao is, you could call one of the most underrated circuits in the world. They, uh, it is uh, one that has a lot of elevation changes, a lot of high speed uh, uh, turns. We're using the fast, fast uh, configuration this weekend. And um, it is simply a beautiful uh, circuit to race on. Yeah, I think for the driver, uh, it's a very nice track. I'm actually the first time here in Portimao. I, I enjoy a lot. Um, yeah, it's a little bit windy, but I think the conditions are the same for everyone. I think the way to describe Portimao is like a roller coaster. Once you get into section two, the middle part of the circuit is just amazing. There's, there's no respite for the driver. It's up and down. The circuit's blind. It's a real challenge, yeah, even in the GT4 car. And, you know, when we hopefully move to GT3, it'll be even more of a challenge. It's fantastic. I think it's one of the most underrated circuits in Europe. You know, it's up there with Spa and Monza and Silverstone. It's one of the best circuits around. The fourth hour of the Hankook 24 Hours of Portimao is underway. And it started with the number 15 Mercedes in the pit lane. Uh, 
in my stint, no, nothing happened specially. I was driving normally and bam, the damper broke, I don't know. So uh, in, t uh, in corner number four, damper broke, so it's over. We, are, uh, <laughs> we have to give up like this. Swiss team is the first that closed their garage door. Meanwhile, a few pits further down, Scuderia Praha team needs an unplanned pit stop. Something made a hole in the tyre because as we saw it, it was really completely destroyed, the tyre. Uh, I think we had really luck because uh, as I got the information, Josef uh, five times spun. <laughs> so <laughs> in, in the quick corner, in the last one, so there is a wall. <laughs> So the number 11 Bohemia Energy Ferrari goes from a full lap in the lead down to third position. With the track being so hot, any kind of debris can destroy your tyres. In the A6 AM category, there's a fight for second position in class, although perhaps fight is too strong of a word. Yes, it's, it's a, a battle is uh, with friends. Uh, so we are not in a war here, so we're doing sports together, and, and so it's a battle, it's fun. Uh, with friends. Joining the battle, the 85 car, and Adam needs to speak to his race engineer just to confirm he is in the scrap for second position. So at the start of the race, or near the start of the race, you know you're sort of battling with everyone anyway. It's only as the race starts to thin out and gets towards the end that, of course, people are on different laps, different strategies, and that's when you start to ask questions just to get a bit of an understanding uh, where you are. And so, again, you still have to keep pushing. You have to remain focused and uh, maintain the tyres, fuel brakes and, and yourself, because in these conditions, it's, it's really tough out there. We're cooking inside the car. The number 24 was at the head of this A6 arm battle, but the lead is lost as the car oversteers. I was a little... Uh, too objective and was uh, well, too quick on the uh, throttle and I did a small spin that cost me 10 seconds and then later on about five or six laps later uh, at turn 12 as I was overtaking a slower car he didn't slow enough and he pushed me outside and that got stuck for about a minute until the engine would start again and that's where we lost another minute. Car collection have their newly updated Audi number 32 in second position overall much to the enjoyment of the team owner, who is also racing the car. The stint were very good. I have uh, the car was really good to drive. Uh, I have no problems. Uh, I have my lap times. It's okay also, and I we can hold uh, the position. Yes, I'm happy with with the stint. Yes. The shadows lengthen as the sun heads for the horizon. Razvan Ubarescu can see the sunset far better with the car turned around. Yeah, I think uh, I was pushing a bit too much at the end of my stint, so the tires were uh, dropping in grip or grip-wise. And uh, I got a little bit too high in, the f in one corner, I, uh, I was trail braking too much and yeah, it happened. Unsurprisingly, in this heat, a few teams have had some problems, but not everyone's been caught out. We're very lucky to have had the experience of coming here last year. And uh, it was very warm last year as well. There's a lot of uh, degradation over this tent, just based on the nature and the abrasiveness of the track. And, uh, and we saw the same behavior uh, this year that we did last year. So we were planning for that. And so far, uh, it's going, going uh, the same way. The sun is about to disappear. And after six hours of racing, it's a good point to see how the race stands. The number 11 Ferrari from Bohemia Energy Racing with Scuderia Praha has regained its lead. Second place, the Audi R8 LMS number 32 of Car Collection Motorsport. And in third position, but only seven seconds ahead of fourth, is the number 27 Renault. Mantai Racing is doing a fine job leading in SPX. They have a full lap advantage over the number 10 Leipzig Motorsport Lamborghini in second. And third in class, the number 78 Speed Lover in GT4. The QSR Racing Skill number 254 has a two lap advantage. Perfection Racing 239 is second in class. And third is the Fox Motorsport number 47 Audi. The Hankook 24-hour series is based on fair and equal competition. That's only possible if you have fair and impartial race officials. Race direction are there to ensure everyone adheres to the rules. It's a sizeable team, all controlled from a central office. This is the race director's office, where the race director sits as the team lead of all the clerks of the courses for the 
preventing uh, uh, races. Uh, we have a couple of people more. We are, have two people in race uh, control who deal with uh, the, the infringements on the track. We have a timekeeping besides us who are dealing with uh, timekeeping, controlling, time, uh, stint times, driver times, uh, penalties for, for driving uh, times, etc. And then we have uh, a couple of uh, clerks of the course who's dealing with uh, really giving the, the penalties to the teams. Marshals, timekeepers and race control pass on information about infringements. But the assessment of penalties is always in the hands of the race directors and they need to have a relationship with everyone in the pit lane. It's depending on the, 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 uh, the, the severeness of the penalty. Uh, if it's really a, 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 a something to do with contact on the track, etc., we call the team managers in and discuss this up front and then we take a decision what time of, type of penalty we, they get it. Not every penalty is accepted immediately by the teams. There's a reasonable uh, number of amount coming up asking why this penalty is given, uh, the, the backgrounds of it, and most of the time they accept it. Sometimes they have a better story than our marshals, and then we go into contact again with the marshals, and sometimes we cancel the, uh, the penalties. But most of the time, for 70 to 80 percent, we stick to the penalties. Most penalties result in the car spending times in the penalty box. That has to be taken within two hours of it being assessed. That gives the teams enough time to protest or fit the penalty within their race strategy. Darkness has descended around the Rio Arad here in southern Portugal. Lights are on on all the cars. Apart from the darkness, nothing really changing in the race. In every 24-hour race, every battle just as important in the night as it is during the day. Although teams may decide to have their drivers with the most experience of racing in the dark in the car in the night hours. Red hot brakes, always a great sight at night time. The spectators able to see when the brakes are on and how heavily they've been applied. It's sensible to break a 24-hour race down into several parts. Part one, settle into your position in the race. Part two, keep the car running in that position. Part three, fight towards the finish flag. Uh, in the night, uh, we maybe we may we hope we get, get no problems, yes, and we can drive uh, without problems, with uh, damage or technical problems. So tonight and tomorrow morning, we must see what's, what is possible. The 24-hour International Endurance Series by Creventic is an open championship. That means teams and drivers can enter the whole championship or just one race. Pavel Lefterov is a driver who has taken this opportunity to come to the series for the first time. My first 24 hour race and I think uh, this year was going to be the last one. Uh, I hope that I get another opportunity because I like 24 hour races. It's, it's a lot of uh, emotions, it's uh, really hard so I really love it. Uh, I really hope that I get a kind of chance. The Leipzig Motorsport Lamborghini is performing well. Basically we had no technical problems, so, so far everything is running quite well for us. We did only one once uh, the, the brake pads changing, so I, I hope that we finish the race without any technical issues. Lots of activity in the pit lane, lots of activity on track. Mechanics may try to rest a little bit in the pits, whilst the drivers try to get some sleep in the evening, the night or in the morning. Robert Lucas did get some sleep and he woke up to find that the lead of the Forsch Racing 189 Porsche had doubled. Yeah, actually we are leading the class with four laps, I think, and yeah, we try to hold the position and this is our job now. Portimao is uh, not an uh, easy track for the car and yeah, we are trying to hold the lead and uh, we have other cars in the, car, in the class and they're quite quick. And yeah, we try to keep the four laps uh, in the front and let's see what can happen. A code 60 is called for a major problem in the fuel station. There's a leak from the supply trucks. The firemen there immediately to avoid any serious danger. But of course the cars can't come in for fuel. We have a leakage and so we have to do a, a red flag to, to stop the race. We have to take all the precautions for a safe way to handle the fuel that's spilled. There were already cars waiting in the pit lane to go to the fuel stop. Others on track, running low. We don't have fuel at all. Uh, we have maybe fuel for one lap and we cannot go to the petrol station. What happened, I don't know. And good that we have a red flag because um, we need the fuel for the car. And uh, yeah, I cannot say anymore. 
A red flag means the cars that were being worked on in the pit lane now have to be left alone. So what happens now? I don't see pictures, I uh, only get the information that uh, the fuel station was blocked for three to four rounds and then they called me in because they said it's red flag, so I'm out of the car now and I uh, don't know really what happens. I don't know what's going to happen. Apparently there is a big fuel leak, so the whole refueling area is uh, under petrol, so I don't know, the drivers got out of the car, so perhaps we can play cards still tomorrow morning at nine, so no, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. As the cars are on the grid, let's take a look at the standings. Two A6 Pros and an A6 Arm in the top three. The Czech Republic entry of Bohemia Energy still leading. Car collection were nearly two laps down, but at the red flag, they were able to go around and join the tail of the grid. That's reduced their deficit to just a lap. Third, GP Extreme Renault number 27. In A6AM, it's the same car that leads that class, has a two-lap lead over the number 24 of SPS Automotive Performance. Third in class, the Pro Sport Performance team with their number 85. The 991 class is firmly in the hands of the Porsche Racing Cup 2 Porsche. They've amassed a six-lap lead over the Track Club Cup 1 Porsche, EB Motors, in third, a lap further back. This is Endurance. Endurance racing is a, a team uh, sport and, and we are five people and uh, endurance is, is for me the best because you, you get a lot of driving hours uh, and you have the, the time to, to get once with the car. From the onboard camera we see something that looks a little like a seat belt coming from the dashboard. It's not a seat belt, it's something else entirely. No, it's not a belt, it's uh, the, the net for the, for the safety. Uh, we have uh, on the right and on the left side, so it's, uh, it's uh, for safety reason. A driver who can tell us a little more is Charles Espel now. The FIA terms it a racing net, so uh, the first from the standard window net that you see, the square net, so a racing net is designed for a different purpose, obviously. It, uh, it enhances the ability of the full restraint seat, the head restraint seat, and it uh, keeps you. So what, what they found is in a 45 degree impact and some different types of impact, you can actually stretch the belts come out of the seat and you can catch the back side of the, the seat with your head or whatever, and it becomes a, a dangerous point. Um, in the States, they've been using this type of net for years, um, and then I think 2013, the FIA started mandating it in, in the higher series of cars uh, in Europe, and now you're seeing it starting to bleed down into the smaller series. So, As president of Safecraft, he's worked on improving safety and usability as the regulations have changed. It used to only be required on the right-hand side, and you can see there's a different mechanism for the right-hand side. Uh, as the technology evolved and the understanding of how accidents happen and, 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 and certain types of wrecks, the uh, Grand Am series in America um, started requiring it, they wanted to require it on the left side. So obviously with the driver change in endurance races, you gotta be able to, to, to get in and out of the car very quickly. So we developed this, this quick push button release. It's very easy for just about any driver to uh, be able to get it in and out as quick as they can. And uh, so that's kind of our, our deal. It's a very simple, Push button, push button release. There's also a pull tab. Very simple, it's a hard mounted system. You can do it with one hand. And uh, so it helps with the driver change. And there are more things added to the car to help with easy driver changes. We have the pedal box moving and uh, we adjust the pedal box, not the seat once, once in the, we go in, in the car. Uh, because Josef is taller than us and we have to, to move the pedal box uh, forward or to the back. What really catches the eye in the cockpit are all the switches and buttons on or near the steering wheel. Christoph Lenz explains a few of them. Um, we can talk to our uh, engineer, to our team. The drinking button, we have a bottle with water, so you can drink something. Here you can switch the page on the dashboard. You can switch back on this side. The neutral button, if you spin or something like this, you have to do to, to the zero, the neutral uh, gear. The chronometer, you don't need it normally just for testing. The start and stop button, the speed limiter, the pit limiter for the box and the code 60 and uh, <laughs> the most thing you need, the flasher on the, for, the, for the head beam. Here you have the ABS and the traction control, you can 
you can turn it and it helps you more or less. Uh, this one is ignition, the main switch for the for the energy, the reverse, the reverse gear, and the fuel pumps. The fire, if the car burns, you have to push here. I hope I don't need it. And this one is the the the, the, the button to to select the driver who is in the in the car. That's it, more or less. Almost 3.30 in the morning. The gates are open for the mechanics to start up the cars again. 15 minutes later, the drivers have taken their positions behind the wheel and the race can restart. All the stars are standing in the same line. They were uh, lined up as during the Code 60 and we do a restart with Code 60. That's the easiest way. We, the, the, the race continues, so a red flag in the endurance race doesn't mean you completely stop and go back some places. You continue the race as where you stopped. To make it fair for everyone, the race directors have decided to start with a long Code 60 so that all cars have ample time to refuel. Four hours of a delay, long enough for the drivers to take some rest, but they've not all managed to do that. We didn't know it was one hour, two hours, three hours. So I tried to sleep a little bit. Uh, but it's not possible because you are stressed uh, and then be, uh, around 3 hour 30 we couldn't go on the track for, uh, for the restart. The Portimao track is not lit but appears not to be as dark as other circuits the series races on. I don't know what it is though but it, you're, you're right uh, places like Dubai are a lot darker but it's uh, you know, it's a short night, I guess, and uh, yeah, it, it, I think you get a lot of light from the Marshall posts, come to think of it now, but never really thought about it, but it's easy to drive here at night. With four hours fewer in the race, gentlemen drivers now have less time to do their required minimum. That means the teams have to change their tactics. This morning uh, during the restart, we, uh, we put Joe in the car, so he went out and did a, a double stint because within our category, we need to make sure that uh, the, the bronze and silver drivers, they complete 50% of, of the race and so we put them in uh, whilst it was nice and cool. It makes it a little bit easier for the body uh, without the sun sort of beating down on the track and on the cars. So Joe went and completed a double stint and then I jumped in for a stint. In the pit, the Renault number 27. Uh, towards the end of my stint, uh, just couldn't get downshifts. Uh, came in and uh, the team could immediately see that it was a broken gearbox. So which is, seems to be the main problem of this car. So uh, it's not the first time that it's happened. It, it hit us in Dubai as well, so. Dawn begins to show over the Algarve landscape. The inky black of the sky overnight, now showing patches of blue. Meantime, in the right of the picture, the 254 of QSR is in the gravel trap. It's a steering fault. I didn't sleep and it was uh, six hours in the morning. I make uh, a little mistake. Uh, I was not concentrated, and I I, uh, I drive in the in, in the grind, and there we lost uh, six rounds. This is the golden hour, the time that drivers love to be in the car. I saw the sun come up, which is always the best in. I uh, put in some good times, uh, clawed it back, so I got the car back to third place. We're now in second. Uh, it's going really well. At this time of day, the conditions are ideal. The 85 Pro Sport Mercedes sets the fastest lap of the race so far, something its driver didn't even know. <laughs> so uh, I, I knew the lap was feeling pretty good, but I didn't quite realise it was uh, the lap record. So, uh, yeah, feeling pretty good about that. It's not all plain sailing. If you have better conditions, so do your competitors. So you have to work even harder. As you drive from the night to the day, you, can, you think you can push, it will be easier, but it's not. So you are tired and you need to uh, really take care about the car because uh, I think this is the time where the most pilots make the mistake. The Ginetta of Perfection Racing Europe are entered in the Championship of the Continents. They didn't have a great start to that championship in Dubai, but have an opportunity here to make up some points. Uh, the two cars that are in the GT4 class uh, this weekend wasn't in Dubai, so we have to, uh, to be sure that we will get some points. But of course, if, if we are not finalised the race and the other cars will get a lot of points, they will also come to court and it will be a, a close, close race. Yeah. We have a big uh, accident in uh, Dubai, so we got uh, only eight points, so it was the, 
We was in the pit in five hours. So. Currently, they have third position in class, four laps behind the class leader, so still a lot to race for. Let's have a look at the other positions. After 16 hours of racing, Bohemia Energy Racing with Scuderia Praha still holds the overall lead in the number 11 Ferrari. 32 of Car Collection is second, and the number one Mercedes of Hoffer Racing is third. All are running in the A6 Pro class. In SPX, the Montai Racing number 912 Porsche leads by an impressive five laps. Leipzig Motorsport with their number 10 Lamborghini really need to step up the pace in the next eight hours. Third in class, speed lover Porsche number 78. The 991 class is for Porsche Cup cars. The number 189 of Porsche Racing, currently the leader in class. Second, EB Motors number 73. And third, Track Club with the 111. In the 24 hour endurance series, the cars have their starting number illuminated during the night. But there's another number on the side, an LED light that shows the current overall position, not just for GT series, but also for the TCE series. The LED lights are red for the GT competitors and green in TCE. This is a great benefit to those watching the racing. And it's thanks to SPAA05 that this information is available. It's of course a challenge to work with so many different teams from so many different countries, so many different cars, and engineers who have to install the electronics. But in fact, it's, uh, it's, all the teams have a lot of experience here. Um, the, the major challenge is always is that we use a wireless system, a radio a transmitter, uh, with all the te telemetry and radios in the paddock, it's always a challenge that try to communicate with the car in a proper way on time. The display doesn't just show the position of the car as it crosses the start-finish line. It updates during the lap. We update uh, three times per second to every car, so we real-time update uh, the position of the car. Uh, the update we get from timing and scoring, that because that's the official ranking we get from timing and scoring, is done on start-finish line. And depending on the racetrack, we can also do it on the intermediate lines. More and more series worldwide are implementing this system. Race organizers realize the added value of the information it provides. It's not just illuminating a little LED, it is really trying to make a system that can very quickly um, show spectators what's going on. Uh, of course the TV commentators and uh, everybody in the paddock also uses that information. And our experience uh, is most of the time a reason for other series to take on, us on board, uh, because we're on track, we know what we're doing and we can develop new things for them, uh, uh, really, uh, in a few days. The Autodromo Internacional do Algarve in the morning, the Algarve hills surrounding the track, the surface cool, although the sun might still be in your eyes, but a professional knows how to deal with that. Well, driving with one hand and one over the eyes, but no, you, you get a pretty good feel of where things are. You have to adjust your uh, speed a little bit in some of those turns just to make sure you don't do anything silly. But other than that, the car loves that cool morning air. The downforce loves that cool, dense air. So it's a lot of fun to drive. We call it one of the happy hours. We have happy hour at sunup and happy hour at sundown when the car really likes the conditions. AB Motors number 73 was second in the 991 Porsche class. Their hopes for taking the class win fading rapidly. Alfred Renard getting ready to take the wheel of the SPX class leader, but he's looking towards the overall standings. Uh, hopefully we can gain some places and actually we are on P6, uh, but it looks good. Uh, the, 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 the speed is good for this at, the, at this moment. Uh, hopefully we can go on five, fifth position or fourth position. As long as you keep an eye on what others are doing, it seems that Portimao is quite agreeable for the teams and drivers. Oh, of course, how can you not enjoy it? I mean, we're having a beautiful day here in southern Portugal. The weather's great. I mean, it could be 30 degrees centigrade out, and it's not. It's very pleasant. So, yeah, we're having a good time. We're having a good race. That always makes it a little more enjoyable when you're, when you're leading. So, The Bohemia Energy team tried to prevent any unnecessary loss of time by using a code 60 to do their brake change. Team Track Club used the same code 60 to get David Abramchik in the car and Lionel Amarouche out. He's pleased with where they stand. I've 
Not, uh, not so bad. Uh, we are in the free, uh, free position. Uh, we are happy. That's good. The car is very good. Uh, the Ide car is very good. The new Monti Porsche is definitely going very quickly in its maiden race. But the Leipzig Motorsport Lamborghini is not too far off. The tactics for the remaining hours partly based on the thermometer. Gabriele is going for double stint, so he will go for two hours and then uh, when, when its temperature is getting hot, we have no cooling in the, in the Lambo, so we have to go not more than one hour and ten minutes. This is the maximum what we can do. Also, we are quite restricted by the BOP because uh, we are, can refuel only 90 liters and the fuel consumption is quite high, so we try to manage it. Only two cars have officially retired, but to Gustav Edelhoff, it feels like more. Uh, the driving is uh, very easy because there's no so much traffic like yesterday. I don't know why. It's such the same uh, cars on the, on the track, but it's easy going and easy moving. Everybody is uh, driving very fair. Uh, it was a big fun. There's a loose Hankook tyre on the track. Jose Klaus keeps on driving. What happened with the car is that the, the wheel nut came out and then the the wheel came out of the car. So the car had to be brought back to our stand. But Jose wanted to know if the car was able to run in three wheels. <laughs> so that's why the reason he, he managed to come up to our stand with the three wheels. The mechanics aren't admitting an error during the tyre change. They're blaming it on the driver. I uh, don't know. Uh, um, you know, uh, Jose is a kind of superman. And he, he, he went with his arm outside the car and unloosed the nut. He's a kind of superman. Hopefully, their technical skills are as creative as their storytelling. Meanwhile, Stefan Adler has been in an accident. I was on the, on the on right, and he can't do nothing on the right on this turn. It, necessary, it will be necessary to go on left, and uh, that's why he was just behind me, he forget uh, the brake <laughs> and uh, he pushed me. As Stefan tries to continue his race, we'll take a look at the standings. Four hours to go and the Bohemia Energy number 11 Ferrari still leads. The updated number 32 Audi R8 is in second. Third overall is the A6 AM leader, Pro Sport Performance, eight laps behind second position. In A6 Pro, the number 11 and 32, of course, third in class, the Hoffa Racing number one. They're 10 laps back, so it'll be hard for them to make up any positions in the rest of the race. In GT4, there's a little more to fight for. QSR Racing Skill, number 254, is just a single lap ahead of second. Fox Motorsports, number 47. And only three laps further back, the Perfection Racing Europe, number 239, is not out of the hunt. This is Endurance. We started a little slow. We were back a little bit. Through the night, we came forward, came forward, and, and I think that's kind of what you have to do in endurance is just keep running your pace and sort of ignore the, the drama and the excitement going on around you. There are many classes in the Kreventnik organized endurance series, whether it's in GT, touring cars or prototypes. And that makes it attractive to a wide range of drivers. You'll also find drivers who become team owners in order to race. This series is fantastic. You can always buy drives, but there's a group of friends. Uh, there's about eight of us to get together and we just want to choose to race with each other. So buying the car and we own the team just makes it a lot more fun. As a team owner, it allows you to select the people you want to work with, even your team manager. Steve Doherty manages the team, a guy that I've worked with for about 10 years in different race series. So we just own the car and then he charges us and gets everything done for us. And that allows the team owner to concentrate just on the racing. I uh, get my engineers, I get the uh, Wiedberg Motorsports uh, which support us. Uh, I always uh, only say what I want and they have to do it. It's uh, when we come to the racetrack, I have a speech to everybody and then I give it over to the team manager. As a driver, you may not have the choice of your teammate. That's not the case when you are the team partner. It's much better because you can choose you can choose the drivers. So we actually 
I uh, made a team from three people, uh, Josef, uh, Matteo and me, uh, which are actually very competitive and uh, it works very well. So we are quick and we can, I can choose the driver so I can decide it whenever we go and uh, in which team, so it's better. Not every team owner sets up a team to drive themselves. Most are there as a business and to accept customers. And if the team owner does take the wheel, it's often out of necessity. Normally I, I want to have customers for my car and one, one, when I have one seat free available, I take it, yes. But normally I want to have full customers. When you have set up a team and as it grows larger, you need to make the choice. Do you want to drive? Or do you want to run the team? Well, both is nice for me, yes. Uh, team owner, it's a, a nice job. Driving is also fine. This is my uh, experience. I love it, yes. But the team, it's bigger and bigger. And so it's, uh, I drive, I don't drive so much. I, I arrange everything. I have to, many to work on the weekend with three cars, yes. And so I drive, I don't drive so much races. It's 20 hours since the start of the Hankook 24 hours of Portimao 2018 and it's bad news for the car collection number 32 Audi. It was second overall. It's now stationary at the side of the track. We were uh, working to catching up the Scuderia Pra Ferrari. It looks um, good to, to catch him up uh, to the end of the race but then uh, after a pit stop when Christopher Hase goes into the car the engine suddenly stopped and uh, and uh, the car stopped on track. There was no... Uh, the car don't run anymore. The car is delivered back to the pit crew. The team are not rushing to get the car back on track. It's clear the car has been retired. The engine stopped and uh, yeah, we had, we had no power. Uh, so and we, at the moment we didn't know what happened. Uh, we have to analyze the data and see what happened, but um, yeah, if it's uh, if it's something wrong with the engine, uh, four hours until the end of the race, it makes no sense to change it because it takes some time. It's a sad moment for the team. This updated Audi has performed well this weekend. The whole team, the drivers, uh, did a great job. Every pit stop was perfect. Uh, the drivers was quick, make no mistakes in the race. Uh, no contacts at all and so yeah it's, uh, it's really a shame yeah this retirement moves the a6 am class leader up to second overall but when the number 73 stops at the side of the track the pro sport team made a call that didn't turn out as expected we predicted a code 60 during one point so we came in darted in the pits sadly it wasn't a code 60 so uh we, we topped up the the fuel and we went straight back out and uh, yeah it's super hot out there so I'm looking forward to uh, maybe jumping in one of the pools that are in the paddock at the moment. GP Extreme had technical troubles earlier in the race with their Renault. What are their expectations at this moment? Expectations? Uh, we're, we lost an hour, over an hour in the pits. We have no expectations. We just want to see the finish, that's all. In endurance racing, teams will try and keep the amount of pit stops to a minimum, as time lost in the pit is hard to be reclaimed on track. With the finish in sight, teams will try to maximize the length of their final stint. Uh, now we're going to drive and normally we just can finish without uh, fueling. It's going to be just, just, just. Smoke from the 58 Mark Focus of VDS Racing Adventures. Everything was absolutely perfect. No oil consumption, nothing silly on the data, just nothing except that all of a, all, all of a sudden engine blowouts. This engine was fresh for Imola and uh, so no mileage issue just I, I suspect um, poor quality part and uh, engine blowout vds is not able to live up to its mission statement uh, at vds we cannot give up it's not allowed but this time unfortunately we don't have time enough to repair so unfortunately it's a it's a did not finish Number one, Hoffa Racing Mercedes is now knocking on the door of a top three finish. Michael Kroll convinced they'll reach that goal. And the chances are not too bad. Not too bad. Kenneth is doing very fast laps. He will do a double stint and if we are lucky it might work out. 
Now we are P4 overall. Uh, we are battling the, the Manti Porsche. That's the only car we can get. The other two cars are too, too many laps in front. EDEC not really confident about their position in the 991 class. Perhaps even a little afraid. Yes, yes, but uh, it's 24 hours and it's not finished. <laughs> That's why uh, we are uh, afraid. <laughs> we have just one hour, 14 minutes, and we are all third. And uh, we hope so that we keep this place. The 239 Red Horse Ginetta is not going to get to the end untroubled. And the team, not yet sure why. Uh, we don't know yet. We have to uh, investigate first. Maybe it's a drive shaft gearbox problem. It, it, it shifts gear, but there is no connection to the, to the rear wheels. Investigations have shown it was a reoccurring issue. We've broken the crankshaft, and uh, we did it before. Just before the race started, uh, yesterday at practice, we, we broke it and we installed two new ones on both sides and still uh, we don't know why but it, it happened again so this is where the race will end for the 239 car well the plan is to put it all together and go home and uh, find out what happened so it won't happen when you go to the states in november just minutes to go and speed lover are rightly proud of their third position in spx they've not had a single problem throughout the whole race i said we put in fuel tires on driver change that was all we did so and we have a in my opinion a very very good result because our competitors in SBX were well, this time the new Porsche that we couldn't beat also the new Lamborghini so we finished on third place that was the maximum we could have here so I'm very happy final lap and the Bohemia Energy Racing with Scuderia Praha number 11 Ferrari is the first to see the checkered flag Team Bohemia Energy Racing with Scuderia Praha extremely happy with the result of the race and the race organisers are pleased with this second running of the Hankook 24 Hours of Portimao. Uh, we have enjoyed a very good uh, second edition of the Hankook 24 Hours of Portimao and um, as our participants have uh, enjoyed it, it was a long race, it was a hot race but um, we're happy to see that this many cars could finish the race. It's a special victory for the Czech Republic team who couldn't have predicted the outcome. I just hope, <laughs> I just hope after the win last year that we will continue. So, Portugal is ours. A fantastic result for the new Manti Porsche in its maiden race. Yeah, what a race. Uh, we came from front behind after a few punctures at the, at the beginning of the race. And, and then, yeah, to finish on the podium, first race of the car ever. Really great work from, from the complete Monte team, Porsche, my teammates. So yeah, it's just amazing to be, uh, to be here and yeah, looking forward to the future with this new new car. Three different classes in the top three. Third, the Pro Sport A6 Am team. Uh, I mean, obviously the Pro Sport guys did an amazing, uh, amazing job and we're just really enjoying driving the same GGT3. Adam, Chris Dulu, Charles, Charlie Putman uh, did an amazing job and uh, all I had to do was back clean up. The last stint wasn't easy. Yeah, well, obviously uh, just conserving all kinds of things on the car. We were about out of rear brake pads actually and just conserving the tires and we made it to the end. So very happy, very lucky. At the checkered flag, a decisive nine lap victory for Bohemia Energy number 11 Ferrari. Second, the new Porsche 991 GT3R run by Manti Racing. A lap further back, in third, the 85 Pro Sport Performance Mercedes AMG GT3. And in the classes, a6 Pro, Bohemia number 11 first, Hoffer Racing number one second, and Car Collection number 32, third position. In A6 Am, Pro Sport Performance number 85 first, 24 of SPS second, and Car Collection number 34 in third. SPX is a win for the Manti number 912 Porsche, Leipert's Lamborghini number 10 is second, and third, the number 78 Speed Lover car. In 991, the class win goes to Forsch Racing with their number 189, Track Club number 111 fought their way to second, EDEC number 75 in third. And finally, in GT4, the 47 from Fox Motorsport, the QSR number 254 in second, Perfection Racing made third position.
The results of this race count towards two series, the Championship of the Continent, and the next round is at the Circuit of the Americas in Austin, USA on the 16th to the 18th of November, and also the European Championship, where the next round is the 24 hours of Barcelona. And maybe there, we'll find out who our first championship winners are. Be there as a spectator, or even better, be there as a participant. If you'd like more info, go to www.24hgtseries.com.